Brother, uh, there was obviously uh, one or two uh, decisions which are going to be heated and I'm sure led to a lot of debate. Uh, Vili LaRue got a yellow card for that challenge in the air. And I'm pretty sure that uh, you Irish folks would have been comparing this to what happened in the first test with CJ Stunner. Yeah, and uh, OK, uh, Emerald ties here for sure. But uh, I think the fact that CJ Stander was the player in the air, and it's all about protecting the player in the air. At this time, it's Tiernan O'Halloran. Uh, look, my personal view was Henny LaRue, was, uh, he wasn't looking at the player at, at Tiernan O'Halloran, <laughs> but I'm sure he knew where he was. Uh, he jumped laterally rather than straight up vertically. With one hand, if you look at that, the, the way he jumps, yeah. Yeah. that isn't to go straight up in the air and catch a ball, in my opinion. Uh, I know a lot of referees are now, uh, it, it's about how badly the injury is. And if O'Halloran had stayed down a bit longer, it probably would have been a red card, which is not the right way around it. Uh, look, we know LaRue is a very a fair player as well. But uh, I think on that occasion, if you're to... Well, personally, uh, the CJ Stander one I thought was borderline because he was the actual player in the air. Yeah. Uh, the, the big thing we got to look at is protecting the players when they do jump in the air like O'Halloran did. And for me, yeah, it was a red, a red card as, as much as you don't want to see a red card given that early in a test match. Well, uh, Bobsia, yeah. you, you, you had a 69% of ball position throughout the game. Um, but worried about not converting that into points? Yeah, well, that's the difference, isn't it? When you want to win against uh, the big teams in the Southern Hemisphere, you've got to be able to convert your opportunities. And we certainly made the opportunities. I think it was something like uh, six line breaks to one or two. And, um, yeah, there was, a, there was a couple of big opportunities there. Luke Marshall in particular, when he, he had a beautiful break, but just forcing his pass forward. And, of course, there was that pass from Paddy Jackson and the acrobatics from Jeff <laughs> Clark. I thought he was... Absolutely outstanding how the, the shortest man on the, on the pitch, I think, including the Irish players, managed to just get up there and, and catch that ball. But there were so many other ways they could have finished that off with a, a dink through, someone running a hard line. Uh, if the ball had just gone through hands, I think they'd have, they'd have scored. So I think for Ireland, they've got to sort of uh, convert those chances if you want to go and win. And, you know, you talk about red cards. The home team is always going to get some decisions from the referee. That's, that's the way of the game, just like we would have got uh, when South Africa tour here in Dublin. Oh, don't talk uh, about it. A lot of people don't talk about it. Don't talk <laughs> about it. Quick tap and go. So, um, you know, when you're, when you're playing away, you've got to take it that you've got to be that much better as well because decisions should go with the, the home team and, uh, and the home crowd as, as they normally do. Shimmy, I actually want to bring you in here yeah. because we seem to be debating more about uh, what injury could occur to a player rather than the intent of the player who is contesting. Um, you know, we saw Villiers Rue uh, red carded, or in fact, Jason Emery was red carded for yeah. a similar incident on Villiers Rue. And Wally, take a look at this on your screen while you're watching. But Shimmy, I'd like you to come in here. Is it is it important what could happen more than? The intention of the player Look, who's contesting? Yeah, it's, I just believe that, you know, you, you watch this and the whole thing about rugby is the safety aspect. And that, that for me, is a non-negotiable. Yeah. You do this and kids see that and these guys get away with it. Then what happens is then it happens at schoolboy rag, at rugby and at lower levels also. And you don't want that. Then they're serious. I mean, these guys are professional athletes. They'll survive these kind of knocks. A guy playing club rugby or some other sort of rugby won't. And, you know, I, I agree with them in terms of the Vili LaRue. I think that they got that wrong, and we'll look at it again, but we definitely got that wrong. And for me, it's forget about the intention or what happens with it. Mm. If a player's in the air and he's handled dangerously, then it's a red card. Until something serious happens, we've got to knock it out the game. Well, so we change... Oh, sorry. Do you, do you think it should be a red card all the time, then? If there's a contest in the air and someone lands... Um, in a, in a position that will probably cause injury? Should it just be straight? Yeah, I think it should be a red card. Much. We can't wait for someone to break his neck and then turn around and say, look, we could have done something about it. Mm. The safety is the overriding thing. That's why scrum laws have changed. The high tackle has been punished severely. You know, all the stories about concussion now. Yeah. All of that. So rugby's got to be safe. You don't go out there to, to get, you know, sort of um, not even career, I mean, physical disabilities from rugby. It's a game that's meant to be played. And if it's not going to be safe, then you've got to get it out the game. Wally, jump in here if you agree or disagree with the gents, because, uh, you know, obviously injury and trying to mitigate that is, is key. It's crucial. Yeah, well, that, that was the worst case again. That was, that was phenomenally bad. And I'm not sure who was a red card given for that. There certainly should have been. I can't, can't see yeah, if that isn't was. a red card. I don't know what is. 
Um, there's a duty of care by the players to look after, to know where you are. Yeah. And there's been enough incidences uh, over the last couple of seasons for any outside backs to specialise. Just like a, a spear tackle, you've got to know where you are. You've got to, even in some cases, there was a famous incident with Brian O'Driscoll with the Lions. Yes. Where it was just New Zealanders' power of Melamu and Tano Manga just had too much power, lifted him up. Nowadays, it's a case of, since then, you've got to realise that power and uh, even though there's no intent there, you've got to actually, it's up to you to make sure the other player lands safely, uh, like a spear tackle, and it's even more so up in the air. I thought Glenn Jackson actually was, um, I, I think he's a, a great referee and great to see players who played at the top level uh, coming in a refereeing, but I thought he had a very poor decision when he said, he kept sort of insinuating he lands on his shoulder, doesn't he? Mm. As if he just didn't want to make that big red card decision. Mm. And the TMO went along with it, sure. and it was a very fine line between neck and shoulder. And in any case, you can come down your shoulder and do a pretty serious injury in any case. Yeah. Sure. And we're not saying that players do it intentionally. It's just the awareness to know that chances are, do I have a realistic chance of getting this ball? No, yeah. I don't. Get out of it, let the guy land safely, make the tackle, and back your defensive structures.